Hi guys, and welcome back to another installment of Secret Graceland. Let's dive in. The first thing we're going to look at is a fan photo of Vernon Presley at the gates in 1964 with this description written on the back. Elvis's dad at the gate of his home in Graceland. He was directing a car to back up so he could get out of the driveway. The other car's power steering was making that noise that any car with power steering makes when the wheels are turned too sharp. This next thing is something I actually noticed kind of recently. The portrait at the bottom of the main staircase shows a sandy blonde Elvis in a frilly white shirt holding the rim of a bike wheel. The original picture is from July 1958 when he was training for the army in Texas. And according to Angie Marchese on a Gates of Graceland video, it's over an oil painting. Just a month later, Elvis attended Gladys's funeral and the press captured him and his dad in their grief. That frilly button up is what he wore that day. Now let's take a look at a decor item that once hung in the living room that became a sort of theme at Graceland. Here's a photo of Minnie Mae, Elvis's grandmother, surrounded by all of her children. They are posed in the corner of the living room that we can stand in on the tour. You can see the main staircase in the hall behind them. Judging by the portrait of Priscilla hanging behind them and the fact that everything is still a white and cream color, this is likely the early 1970s. Now take a look at the giant peacock on the wall above the cabinet. Today, there is a painting of Elvis that hangs there, but back then there was this huge bird in that spot. I think there was even two, a matching set. It was even featured in the new Elvis movie in that very spot. A bit ahead of its time for sure, but you can still see it behind Gladys in this still. This was removed over the years, but it's not gone. This peacock was given to Elvis's housekeeper, Nancy Rooks. Moving out to the dining room. Let's take a look at this space over the span of 30 years, starting in the 1940s. The first family that lived there enjoyed this room and it looked a lot like what it looks like today and when Elvis saw it, but it had harder floors. Here's a photo from the 1940s where the family had a huge area rug on top of the original hardwood floors. Fast forward to the mid-1970s, and when Elvis last saw this space, like in this view from Jeannie LeMay's book, Elvis, Linda, and Me. There was not only huge red high-back chairs, but red drapes around the beautiful archways in both the dining room and living room. Let's head into the kitchen and stop right at the counter where the family used to sit and enjoy coffee. I wanted to point out something I noticed recently in this photo. Here's Priscilla, her mom, and baby brother sitting at the counter in the late 1960s. The photographer is inside the kitchen, the part that we can only look at. But I want to point out what's beyond them in the staircase. This is the kitchen staircase that Elvis used most often. Today, it's covered in the same carpet that runs throughout the kitchen, which has been replaced several times since Elvis's time. But in the 1960s, this carpet was red. Okay, this next fun fact is super weird. For this, we have to imagine Graceland as it was originally, before Elvis's time, before he added the jungle room. The back of the house used to end at the kitchen. That's why there's an exterior window and door inside the kitchen that just lead to the jungle room area. You know the steps that we take back upstairs from the basement, then are able to look out at the jungle room? Today, they're completely inside the house. It's these pointed out here with the down arrow. But originally, and for several years after Elvis lived at Graceland, these were outside. Here is roughly the same view of Elvis sitting in the backyard, but what would eventually become the jungle room. Behind him is the door that leads into the kitchen that's still there. And over his left shoulder, there's a railing. That's the then exterior staircase down to the basement that for us on the tour has green shag carpet on the walls. I'm setting this scene so I can read this odd thing that happened there long before it was Elvis' home. This excerpt comes from housekeeper Nancy Rooks' book, Inside Graceland. Shortly after going to work at Graceland, I was talking with my father-in-law about the house. He told me that when he was younger, he worked as a sharecropper on a farm nearby in Mill Branch in Whitehaven. He said that he used to go to a dentist who, at the time, was living at Graceland, and that dentist once pulled a tooth that was giving him trouble. He told me that he sat on an outside step leading down to the basement while the dentist pulled the tooth. Next, we're heading upstairs. 
In 2003, Lisa Marie gave an interview to Chris Heath of Rolling Stone magazine where she described this sanctuary for us, which I'll read here. Occasionally, she visits Graceland. Those of Elvis's cooks who are still alive will come in and prepare the same soul food for her they all used to eat there. Fried chicken, black-eyed peas, mashed potatoes, cornbread, and she'll go upstairs. Nothing has been touched, she says. It's exactly the same. There was a whole life in that house. It's a beautiful sadness. It's either really painful or it's very comforting. It goes either way. The carpet is the same. My room is exactly the same. Nothing has been touched. Upstairs, which has never been open to the public, is my room and his room, next to each other, in an attic. It's pretty creepy. It's a shrine. Usually she'll go up there alone. It's very comforting for me, she says. The books, the videos, everything is still there. The Godfather, Citizen Kane, Pink Panther, Bruce Lee, all of his videos are still there. All of his records. And that is it. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in my next video.